Hello world and welcome. Today we will talk about the comparison between random forests, XGBoost boost and neural nets, where you can use them because I get a lot of messages regarding these topics um, that you have a speci special problem or data set and you don't know where to use the assemble learning or uh, neural nets. So today we'll make it a little bit more clear um, whether to use um, random forest, XGBoost or neural nets. My name is Harris and let's get started. So if you like this channel and the content, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you leave a like comment there. I'll be really happy about it. So let's just um, compare random forest and XGBoost, which are assemble methods and um, where to use them. So um, to just recap, here we have a um, single decision tree iteration where we have only one decision tree. So if you compare this with uh, bagging, so um, bagging technique, um, which is basically the random forest, uh, you have decision trees in parallel and they are um, doing a majority voting at the end of the process. So if you have a um, data set like um, cats or a dog and two decision trees has the output of a dog and one um, from the cat, then obviously you will go for the dog, right? So but the boosting technique here is a little bit more different. Um, it's a sequential um, tree which is growing and it's um, the XGBoost boost which is um, kind of using this method. And you can see each iteration, there's a um, arrow here, which shows you that through each uh, iteration, there will be a decision, whether it's a dog or a cat, plus here the arrow will be kind of propagated to the next decision tree to make it more accurate. These two types are sample learning methods, which you can see here if you have a problem and we have different decision trees or you can combine even different models like here in this case decision tree, NAFBase, um, KNNs and support vector machines um, to make it um, combine all the advantages from these models through one output to have the best accuracy and the best fitting model, right? So to just um, go for random forest um, you can, uh, if you want to build a robust model with to reduce the variance through bagging is when you create different models by resampling re your data to make the result more robust. It performs really good at noisy signals. So if you have, for example, sensor data and you have a lot of noise, you, you can go for random forest. XGBoost, um, on the other hand, reduce the variance as well because you're using multiple models like bagging, as we mentioned before, which is also performed in um, random forest. It reduces also the bias by the subsequential models by telling him what errors the previous model made. This is the boosting part. It performs good in imbalanced data sets. Um, for instance, if you have a fraud data set where you're using for credit validation, if you have, um, let's say, a uh, thousand normal cases at transactions and two cases where you have a fraud, then you can go for XGBoost. So in comparison to just wrap up, it's the architecture that defines them. The random forest builds each tree independently while grading boost builds one tree at a time. This adaptive model assemble works in a forward stage wise manner. Introduction weak learner to improve uh, shortcoming and um, existing weak learners. How the com how the combined result looks like a random forest combined the result at the end of the process by averaging all majority rules that we at we saw at the very end. It is doing is here after the process. Whether um, the grading boosting combines the result along the way so each time it will be a decision whether um, it's a dog or a cat, let's say. The advantages 
both algorithms can be used for regression or classification. This is pretty good. You don't need to take care of the model so much. Uh, you can just use one of them, random forest XG boost, and um, it can perform on both problems. It's suited for um, a small data set or on tabular data. I would always use um, assemble technique. The neural nets, on the other hand, are used for more specific tasks. As you can see here, you have an input layer, you have uh, many different hidden layers here and one output layer, for instance. The advantages of neural nets are that you are um, have no feature engineering anymore. You don't need to take care of the best performing feature with the, with the best correlation through it. You, you have a better hyper-meter optimization, which means um, at machine learning, of course, you have uh, the model uh, think where it can perform hyperparameter optimization. But with neural nets, you can really have a much better, let's say, um, performance through to uh, optimizing um, the, the number of hidden layers, the number of um, neurons and so on, and even the layer itself, there are thousands of different layers which you can use for performance to optimize everything. It's also perfect for applications like images, audio and text, where you have CNN for images, text, you can also use um, recurrent nets or LSTMs here. So it's a really good fitting for this time, type of um, special occasions, let's say, special um, problems. It has, in the most cases, a high accuracy if you really are comparing the sample methods as we saw, so machine learning models with neural nets. In the most cases, you have a higher and better accuracy. So I would always prefer neural nets in, um, if you have a really huge data set and a special um, problems or special cases where you have images, audio, text data, always use deep learning. It has also the ability to learn and models are non-linear and they are complex um, relationship. Through the activations function in neural nets, you can use different activations function like ReLU, Sigmoid um, and so on. And through this, you can make your signal or the output really non-linear because in, in most real cases, in uh, the project, you need non-linearity, which is really important for um, neural nets and for your project as well. So to just sum up, if you uh, see the um, winners from the Kegel um, Award through the last decades, you can see that Random Forest was the number one performing uh, at the very first, first beginning. After XGBoost was um, introduced, um, XGBoost was the next um, winner through the most problems. So it was really outperforming Random Forest in very many cases. And then you can see that after um, 2006, after Neural Nets, and even uh, further, the um, it was used many projects, so it was really um, used in the most um, cases. It was outperforming as well the assemble learning. So neural nets are really the things where you have to go for. And um, the nowadays projects, if you have just normal tabular data, go for a XG boost. I would prefer, but neural nets for special. Um, inputs and yeah this is my kind of wrap up so thanks a lot and see you soon